Assembling the quad lock system requires the following basic tools. Utility knife with an extendable blade, tape measure, spirit level, string line and chalk line, keyhole saw, wire twister, hammer, screw gun, pruning shears, ladder and scaffolding, gloves and safety goggles. To ensure the easiest and most efficient installation of your quad lock walls, pay close attention to the footings. Standard footing width of 16 inches can be used for walls 8 inches nominal concrete and less. Walls greater than 8 inches should be matched to footings specified by the project engineer. They should be poured level to within a tolerance of a quarter of an inch, wherever possible, and the edges troweled smooth for proper placement of the metal track. If there are steps in the footings, set the elevation in even 12 inch increments to match the quad lock panel profile. The window and door box should be pre-built either on or off site using treated lumber or plastic extrusions once you know the size of the rough openings. Set the header on top of the sides so that it bears on the sides. All window bucks need large gaps along the sill to allow concrete placement and to ensure consolidation underneath. You can do this by using 2x4s on edge and leaving a space between them or by drilling holes 3 or 4 inches in diameter. Openings like doors that sit on the footing or slab must be installed first. Drive galvanized nails or screws into the back side of the buck to provide shear value. Locate and clearly mark all window openings for later installation of prefabricated buckouts. For maximum energy and material efficiency, use panel offcuts and metal window brackets to form door and window openings. This method reduces wood consumption and the potential for thermal transmission through wood members used in forming buckouts. Locate the outside building line and strike the line. The building line is the outside of the foam. Remember to account for the two and a quarter inches of foam on the outside of the wall. The outside track should be installed first using the building line struck on the footing. The metal track is then secured to the footing every two and a half feet and at the ends of the track. After the outside track has been placed, use wood spacers to place the inside track. Cut the spacers to match the wall cavity size. Refer to the chart on the outside of the tie box for interior cavity and outside wall dimension. To avoid potential problems, the job supervisor should carefully check the attachment of metal track to the footing before walls are built. All corners should be installed first. While other forming methods may call for building into the corners, the design and precise layout of the quad lock system is best suited for building from the corners to a common seam in the middle of the wall. Properly assembled, the unique quad lock corner assembly virtually eliminates the need for additional corner bracing and makes multi-story construction safe and efficient. To start, always work from the inside of the corner facing out. Have panels, ties and corner brackets ready and within arm's reach. Pre-cut and pre-bent reinforcing bar should also be placed just inside the footing. To better resist concrete pressure during the pour, Quadlock now recommends that all the bottom panels be secured into place with spray foam, as shown in this demonstration. Place a 3 quarter inch wide bead of foam at the outside corner of each track over a distance of not more than 8 to 12 feet. Quickly place the panels in the track before the foam has a chance to set. The foam will adhere the panels to the track and fill the tie slots at the bottom. Place two full 48 inch panels in the outside track at 90 degrees to one another, always lapping the left panel over the right. Place outer corner brackets over the knobs as shown. For the inner corner panels, cut the ends closest to the corner by the wall cavity dimension plus two inches. For example, inside corner panels for a 6 inch nominal wall cavity get cut back 8 inches. Always cut the end closest to the corner. Place these panels in the inside corner track, making sure that the ends line up with the outer panels. 
Always lap the inner panels the same as the outer panels. Place inner corner brackets over the knobs as shown. Place a full tie as close to the corner as you can, making sure that the two flanges are both inserted in the inner corner bracket. Cut a tie into two pairs of flanges as shown and insert in the outer corner bracket as shown, making sure that the slots closest to the corner have a flange. Now place the ties so they straddle each deep groove in the panel at 12 inches on center. Set an additional pair of panels in each direction, working away from the corner Placing ties at 12 inches on center using the deeper grooves as a guide. Next, continue laying out the panels and ties to a common point midway down the wall. Bring panels and ties from the opposing corner until you're ready to cut the last panel in the middle of the wall. A good place to put this common seam is in the middle of a door or window. First, pull a tape over the entire length of the wall to ensure that the building dimension is correct. Make adjustments if necessary. Now measure the remaining gap between panels and cut panels about a quarter of an inch shorter than the measurement. Cutting these panels too tightly may increase the wall length and force the corners out of plumb. This seam will continue to the top of the wall. Since the seam probably is not on the two inch layout pattern, cut the cross braces out of a tie to form split ties that operate independently of one another. Place one tie on either side of the common seam. Once the first course has been assembled, pre-cut rebar can now be placed. Determine which molded rebar chair in the tie best suits your plan and lay the horizontal bar into that position around the entire wall. Make sure you have the appropriate minimum lap between bars and tie the splices. Horizontal bar can be tied to the plastic ties. If allowed by local officials, slip a four inch long piece of one and a quarter or one and a half inch plastic pipe over each vertical stub this will be used later to secure a vertical reinforcing bar that is dropped in from the top. If vertical rebar is already placed, snip the cross member of the tie so you can work around the bar. Place a pair of panels on the second row so the middle point of both panels line up with the vertical joint in the panels below. There should be a 24 inch offset between the end of the panels in the first row and the second rows. Do the same on both sides of the corner. Measure the spaces remaining to the corners, keeping the lap pattern identical to the bottom row. The outside panels will always be 24 inches with the factory ends in the corner. The inside panels will vary in length depending on the wall cavity size, but will both be the same length if lapped identically to the outside panels. Note that there is no need to log cabin the outside corner panels. Doing so adds no strength to the walls and will throw off the layout between rows by two inches. Again, do not log cabin the outside panels. Place corner brackets, full ties and tie flanges in the same manner as the first row. Corner bracket and tie placement should be the same on every row.
to expedite tie placement work in pairs shown here by our crew. Make note of all cut dimensions and prepare panels for the entire wall height. For instance, in an 8-foot wall, rows 1, 3, 5, and 7 will all be identical. Rows 2, 4, 6, and 8 will also be identical. Look down the wall cavity and make sure all ties are aligned vertically. Repeat courses 1 and 2 to a height of 4 feet. At 4 or 5 feet high, it's time for the job supervisor to stop all construction and check for plumb, straight, square, and level. Check all walls with a level, tape measure, string line, and laser level to make sure the building is the specified size and shape. Make adjustments where needed and monitor as construction continues. When dimensions and plumb are checked, secure the odd dimension seam by screwing 1x4 strapping across the seam on every other row of panels. And finally, use spray foam to fill in the gap once the wall has been plumbed and secured in place.